Hello, and thanks for choosing Pebblehost. Today we'll be taking a look at the 1.17 Minecraft update, as well as the 1.17 data pack for the 1.17 update. As you can see, we've logged on to our server and are in the server panel. And in the jar and pre-install menu, we've gone ahead and selected the vanilla Minecraft 1.17 update. Now, as you can see, we recommend that you use at least four gigabytes of RAM for the 1.17 update. Uh, this is due to the resource usage it uses. Um, it is due to it being a vanilla version, a bit more resource intensive than something along the lines of uh, choosing paper or spigot, which both paper and spigot have not yet released the 1.17 uh, updates as of making this video. So if we wanted to run the vanilla 1.17 update just by itself, all we would need to do is select the jar file and then start our server. However, if you are also wanting the Caves and Cliffs data pack update, um, we can go ahead and download this data pack and upload it to our server. And what this data pack will do is essentially provide you with the Caves and Cliffs update before it's actually officially in the Minecraft version. So if we go ahead and download that data pack and then go back to our server, click File Manager. And as you can see, I've already started the server to generate all of the server files. So once the server has been started once, you'll wanna go ahead and click the world folder. And from here, we're going to select everything by clicking the top check mark here and unselect the data packs folder. So essentially what we're doing is deleting everything besides the world and the data pack folder. And we're doing this because in order for this specific data pack to work, we need it to generate the world using this data pack. So it has to have some place to actually grab the data pack from, and that's the data packs folder. So we'll go ahead and upload the data pack that we downloaded. So we'll select that. So as you can see, it's now been uploaded to our server. And all we need to do now is go back to the server page and click the start button on our server. Now, because this data pack is adding in that extra generation, it may take a little bit longer than normal to actually generate the world. Additionally, because this is a data pack and not the official released version, we can expect performance to be um, a little bit decreased due to that being the data pack. And there's quite a lot for it to load uh, just from the data pack itself. Okay, so it's been about a minute or two and the server is now online and started. And if we go ahead and click console, we can see that it did take quite a bit of time to generate that world, but that's just due to the data pack itself and having to generate that new world with the uh, additions from the data pack. Now, one thing to note is you may see this can't keep up the server's overloading message in your console. This is completely normal. And this is just because right after it generated the world, it just had a bit of a difficult time uh, keeping up as it had to generate everything and then start the server. So now I'm gonna go ahead and launch up my Minecraft and we're going to go ahead and check out the world generation with 1.17 as well as the Caves and Cliffs data pack. Okay, so as you can see, we are now logged in game and this is Minecraft 1.17. As you can see, we kind of spawned near a village here of some sort. And I believe some of these changes may be slightly new, although I'm not positive. Let's go ahead and jump in game mode spectator, and this should give us a better view. So there you go. And this, all of the caves and cliffs stuff here, this is generated from the data pack itself. If we go down here, I believe these are the new additions in terms of blocks. So we've got deep slate here, and then this should be, yep, deep slate redstone ore deep slate gold ore and all of these new ores are just in uh minecraft 1.17 itself this isn't just due to the data pack um the data pack is mainly responsible for simply just generating uh this type of terrain underground so i jump back into uh, spectator here to kind of just give you guys a better view of this um we did have one of these crystal structures spawn right here so that's kind of cool uh, it's got the crystals inside with the new blocks and whatnot. And if we go ahead and fly up into the normal uh, terrain here in the overworld, um, there's not too many differences in terms of uh, changes that have been made. Um, one thing you will note is that world generation may take a little bit longer depending on your server plan, uh, as well as 
if you uh, as well as if you are using this data pack, world generation may take a little bit longer than normal just because it has to do all of the generation underground as well. So with that being said, that's going to wrap up this tutorial. If you have any questions regarding anything we've covered in this video, feel free to join the Pueblos Discord and we'd be more than happy to help you there.